Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and today we're going to be talking about the High Elves in our State of the Faction series. So the High Elves are a race which, to be honest, have done quite well when it comes to content. Not only did they start off with two legendary lords, but they've had two paid-for DLCs and two FLC legendary lords, which started off with their own unique mechanics. They actually ended up really well. The High Elves, as they currently stand, are in a pretty good spot in terms of their unit they play very similar to that on the tabletop, and the representation has always been great in terms of just how High Elves have always been. What I would say is that the High Elves do need at least one more DLC. There is that hypothetical that everyone's been talking about with Sunesh in the original roadmap, which would have been Sunesh, High Elves, and Dark Elves, and to be honest, I think that's all that's left. One more DLC, seven Legendary Lords, which would be absolutely perfect. A small rework to Tyrion and Teclis, and a quick note here, I did say a while back, a few days ago actually, that I thought Teclis was fine. No, I was wrong. I was actually thinking about SFO Grimhammer Teclis, and a small quality of life update, not a complete rework to the High Elves, and I think we're golden. So let's talk about what I think could be done to finally finish off the High Elves. All right, first up, we need to look towards the tech tree, and the tech tree is actually quite fine. I know some people would like to see it changed, but as it stands for the High Elves, I think it's fairly decent. The only thing that I would see changed is the administration stuff at the bottom. You see, you need other prerequisites, like getting your hands on certain buildings and certain resources to really benefit from it. What I would say here is removing that. It's just anti-fun. There's a lot of stuff where you require prerequisites or even just cash. What I would say for the trade good stuff is it should be nerfed, but hear me out before you get angry. So you don't need any buildings and say, for example, if something brings plus 10% income to your settlements, it's actually 5%. However, if then you go and take the prerequisite that was originally there, uh, let's just say, I don't know, a gold mine, then the tech would be buffed up to get to 10%. You're still getting the same values as it currently stands, but you can get a weaker value prior to that, which means that you can already start getting the bonuses that you will need, even though they're not just as good, and it will incentivize you to move out. This is a big thing for the High Elves. It's very cozy, but some incentivization to go out and get better bonuses is always a good thing. Also, when it comes to the military advancement stuff, it should either be a building or cash and not both. It's not great to have to funnel in some cash and also focus building up another building, which will cost you some money too. All right, this is another personal thought, but regarding the recruiting of lords, I don't think that you should have really bad traits when it comes to not spending influence. So it takes a while to get some influence. Yes, it's not that expensive. The first one is around, what, 60? But the idea is that early on, yeah, you kind of suffer for it if you're trying to build up some extra armies armies which you're going to need because in all one it does become kind of aggressive you've got dark elves coming for you some of them are already in there some of them are coming in with morafi you do have some orc factions which normally get destroyed quite early there's no need to worry about nakari but then you do have the vampire coast you're gonna get swarmed having multiple armies early does help now not all the traits are quite bad but yeah some of them can be kind of brutal what i would say here is that the high elf lords need kind of just bad traits not negative Negative traits, just traits that don't really buff you up that much. Essentially, something that you could basically ignore and then using influence for the better traits. Making the influence a little bit more expensive, yes, but that doesn't mean that you're going to be having armies with minus five missile strength to all your range units when it comes to a faction that primarily uses range. Now, I've seen a lot of people ask for this, and to be fair, it makes a lot of sense. The Chaos Dwarf mechanic for the Tower of Tsar should be reskinned and implemented for the High Elves. And this makes a lot of sense, considering the fact that the High Elves are one of the most political factions in Warhammer Fantasy. The intrigue of court happens so often that... Yeah, it just is something I think people have been calling for since the Chaos Dwarfs released. Oh my god, last year. Yeah, it's been that long. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it just makes a lot of sense having that to be able to confederate all the other factions. And this will make it easier for you to pick up all the other legendary lords. Which also solves another problem for the High Elves. One of being able to recruit defeated legendary lords. Well, you'll be able to do it with this. So it kind of kills two birds with one stone. The High Elves don't really have that many mechanics to them. They're pretty bare bones when you compare them to the Skaven and even the Lizardmen too. What the High Elves have at the moment is essentially just the Empire <laughs> um, 
you know, mechanic of influence and that's it. It's it's kind of boring. So having the tower repurposed as the Phoenix Court, which has been done by mods before, by the way, it's something that just makes sense. I think even modders agree there would just be very helpful. I think that would be a big push to making the Hyles feel a little bit more fleshed out. The great thing about this is it also allows you to make use of influence as a currency because at certain points in your campaign, especially if you like doing mid to long campaigns, you're going to end up with a stupid amount of them and they're honestly just wasting away. Yeah, sure, you're using it when it comes to normal lords, well, the buffed up versions, but yeah, I mean, having this at least gives you something else to do. Trade is really, really important for the Hiles. It's something that just feels missing right now. Sure, you've got those trade tax, which exist, but it's not really enough. I know some people have been saying, oh, what they should have is the cafe and caravan system, and I kind of see that happening, but the problem is that I doubt Games Workshop would actually approve that because they want Cafe to be like, oh, look at me, I'm so unique. And to be fair, we've got two caravan factions, which makes more sense. The Cafe and Caravans, and then obviously the um, Chaos Dwarf Trains. I would rather see that being its own separate thing for these guys, and instead just use the marketplace mechanic that we've got for the Dwarfs, and we've also got for the Tomb Kings. I know this isn't the most unique thing, however, there's a lot of really famous items in lore for the High Elves that we just don't have access to. So it would be kind of cool just to see this implemented here. Again, this further incentivizes you to branch out and get all the different resource buildings that you can get, so I kind of see this working quite well. One of those mechanics that you don't have to use, but it's there if you want it. I mean, just look at the dwarves. A lot of people kind of ignore it, but then there's some pretty tasty runes that you can pick up which make your faction even stronger. Alright, so we should talk about some reworks. We're going to start off with Tekla, seeing as I completely forgot that in vanilla he has nothing. So yeah, he should have something similar, but not identical to that of the Colleges of Magic, which is the new mechanic used by Balthazar Gelt. The reason because of this is, well, he is one of the best spellcasters in Warhammer Fantasy. It's Teclas, he's one of the founders of the Colleges of Magic, and not only that, it would make sense for the spellcaster legendary lord to have access to a bunch of spellcasters, heroes, and also getting access to the Cataclysm Magic. Now, this is something that should be for a lot of factions in terms of Cataclysm Magic. Uh, Kairos, for example, needs it too, but slowly but surely, it's likely that we're going to see this happen. I like the idea of the colleges being kind of reworked and reshaped to fit a high elf theme because it would make a lot of sense for this character to have something. He's got a pretty fun campaign regardless. Your only real enemy at the very beginning is Kairos and then after that you'll be kind of smooth sailing. You've got a lot of potential friends with the lizard men unless they turn against you. So yeah, I mean this makes a lot of sense here. The big issue, I think, is Tyrion. You see, I've seen a lot of people going, well, he just needs something to be able to confederate people. But really, yeah, I mean, the tower mechanic would do that. The Phoenix Court mechanic would do that. I could see something being done in a very different sense, though, to give him something more of a unique campaign. So one thing that could be done here is using Tyrion, going out to reestablish the High Elf Domains. As you might be aware, early on into High Elf lore, they did expand into different locations and basically start building outposts, castles, and so on. What if you started re-establishing them, either controlling them yourself or giving them to another High Elf faction, both major or minor, and that is essentially you getting bonuses. The more of these territories that you can control, you would then get more faction-wide bonuses for yourself. The idea here is the Phoenix King has gone, all right, time to head out, let's re-establish everything that we've had, let's now make the High Elves great again. I think something like that gives you a little bit of incentive to move out a bit. It's something which I've been trying to think up a lot. The High Elves I can think about, but when it comes to Tyrion, I'm kind of drawing a blank there. But yeah, maybe you guys have a better idea there. This is just some stuff I was thinking about, like fixing up the High Elves a little bit. If we look towards the roster, things are a bit different. The High Elf roster as it stands is great. It might not look at it when it comes to like the heroes and lords, but it's actually the case that there's so many variants, they're all piled up, all the spellcasters, they have access to all the laws of magic already. Yeah, the roster is a really good representation of that of the 8th edition army book. There is literally just one thing missing and that's it. 
I am really pleased with the Heil faction. You can tell the DLC gave them a lot of attention. Hell, even created some new stuff too. There's just a few things missing to completely finish them. So I think one final DLC and we're done. It's great that we're getting so many factions to the point that they only need one DLC and it's done. I'd like to see where we get to in a few years time. Depends on obviously how Creative Assembly uh, support this title. The next DLC is what, the end of the year? We don't know how far that's going to be just yet. If it's going to be like October, November, December. But if they can increase the candons ever so slightly, well, yeah, we could be done and have everything done by maybe four, five years. This would be the ultimate Warhammer Fantasy experience. So for the missing lord, we're actually going to go with a hero option, the Lothan Sea Helm. And this is because I could imagine a hero version coming in known as the Commodore, or better yet said, the Sea Helm would be the hero and the Sea Lord, which would be the exact same thing, would be the Lord. So what this is, is essentially a skirmishing based lord, uh, which is known to ride on a Lothan sky cutter, which we'll talk about a little bit later. It's got a big trident and a shield. Generally, they're supposed to be the kind of like support guys, so you can buff up your armies and so on, which I think that, you know, the high elves could do with a buffer too. So we could have a buffer lord and a buffer hero, which can do some big damage anti-large too. I know some people would go with the anointed of Asurian, but if sea lord Aisling ends up being the legendary lord, which we'll talk about a little bit later, I imagine they're going to go with the Sea Patrol theme, and I think that that could work out really well here. So a support character which is also good at skirmishing, it's also very good at melee damage. I wouldn't really give them a bow. I mean, it's doable. It's one of these things. If we had like proper weapon swapping in Total War Warhammer, then it would make a lot more sense. But there's already a few things with bows when it comes to the High Elves, so overdoing it might be a bit much, especially for a support character. But yeah, as you can see, the model is super cool. The Sea Helm has always had one of the best high elf models. Then again, like a lot of the stuff that did come out, like the Island of Blood stuff, was just really, really good in terms of high elf updates. I think that's done. After that, no more Lord and Hero versions are needed. So we can start looking towards units. So the first thing we talk about is the Lothan Skycutter. And yeah, there'd be two variants here. This is a flying chariot. So a chariot pulled by a great eagle. One variant would be with a bolt thrower, the other one would be with archers. Already you've got something really cool here because they are highly mobile artillery pieces when it comes to the bolt thrower. It's honestly one of the best units that were ever released. I've built up two of them recently. I'm painting them up for Old World. I'm still just trying to decide my high elf paint scheme. But yeah, I mean, it makes a lot of sense to have these in. If we're going to get the Loth and Sea Patrol, this is part of the Sea Patrol. And in general, you want something different. The High Elves have a lot of stuff which kind of is stationary. All very good cavalry. Having a flying war machine is going to be quite cool. The same thing with the bows. A version with just bowmen would be great for harassment. It'd still be decent at charges. Not great though, because like giant eagles aren't really that great. But this is an iconic unit. We've had it as a mod for a while. I do imagine that it's only a matter of time until we get this as a proper, like officially added in units, I really, really doubt that we'll end up with a character like Aisling in-game and then no Skycutter. Next would be the Merworm, which was also associated with the Sea Patrol. You can see why I'm thinking of the Lothan Sea Patrol so much. And yeah, big monster. It's something that we've technically got in-game already, just not a playable unit. Aminar is a Merworm, so yeah, I mean... A little bit of the work is done in terms of texturing and so on. It would just have to be re-sized uh, and everything. And then obviously proper animations to fight. But the Merworm is a Forge World unit. It's cool. I mean, that's the big thing. Cool factor is just awesome. The, I don't know, we don't have a lot of Forge World stuff when it comes to the High Elves. I mean, yeah, we have the Arcane Phoenix, but bleh. I want a big monster that's got poison attacks that can move around the battlefield really quickly and just rip apart other monsters too. It's mostly seen as an aquatic thing, but you can take it on land. This is why the model is designed that way. It's one of these things that on the tabletop it wasn't great, but keep in mind that you had to use it with a supplement and monsters back then in 8th edition were just god awful. Uh, they're better now in... <laughs> they're better now when it comes to Old World, but I don't know if we'll see that return. It would be really cool if anyone from Games Workshop is listening, you know, hint, hint. So a big monster for the High Elves would be kind of cool. Something different, you know, the Dark Elves have big monsters. It'll be kind of cool to see the High Elves use the big monster that they've got at their disposal because the Moorworms pretty much protect 
fourth one, there's an agreement between the High Elves and the Moeworms, and it's long-standing. It's super long-standing. Yeah, I feel like it'd be a waste not to do it. Now, the big problem here is that there's not a lot of missing units. When it comes to the High Elves, they're effectively done. There is some stuff that is essentially missing from the High Elf Sea Patrol, with this is where the Merworm comes from, and the uh, Sea Lord, and so on. But... Yeah, they were more actual kit bash units because that's pretty much what the Storm of Chaos stuff was for the majority of the rosters. Stuff that's missing is Lothan Sea Rangers, Ship Company, it's nothing really too special. I could imagine these units being reimagined as they were all kit bash units and maybe turned into something new. Or if everything is going well with Games Workshop, maybe there's something that might be coming out in Warhammer the Old World that. Yeah, could end up here. While some people might say, yeah, new IP, blah, 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 blah. There's a big argument regarding that. Doom Knights of Zinsha, the big thing, those were never really a unit. They were a unit champion, and they weren't mounted on these uh, discs of Zinch. So I could see something new coming in. We have had loads of new stuff come in that wasn't a unit on the tabletop in its own right. Same thing with the Chameleon Skinks for Oxyotl, right? The ones that throw the bombs. Those were a unit champion, not its own thing. Hey, it's possible Creative Assembly have been quite good when it comes to that, but time will tell. The main thing is the Skycutter and the Merworm are really the biggest things. There is a situation where we could barely get any new units for a high elf DLC, and what they might decide to do is go, oh, let's just add in another legendary lord and another legendary hero. So that could kind of balance it out. I don't see that happening though. Or they could just say, yeah, this DLC is going to be smaller. It's therefore cheaper, but there is more stuff happening with, I don't know, the Sunesh faction or maybe the Dark Elves. If that possible DLC is still on the cards, we don't know if that's even going to happen. It's more speculation than anything else. That's what the fans are asking for. I imagine the Creative Assembly are listening there, so it would be kind of nice if they did listen and just go for this, right? Missing units is going to be smaller here, I'm sorry, but yeah, there's literally nothing there. <laughs> so now I guess we should move on to the Legendary Lord, and there's only one character that I really, really hope makes it into Total War Warhammer. That is Sea Lord Aisling, who is the leader of the Lothan Sea Patrol, so it kind of makes sense if we're going to get a nautical theme there. He is also a character that had a recent redesign in terms of appearance and so on in Warhammer Fantasy roleplay, with his own unique faction icon and everything it looks great and obviously when it comes to cubicle 7 they always get really really fantastic artists but yeah he's a young prince he's in charge of the Loth and sea patrol essentially the high elf navy at the same time he's a sea lord of off one he is a fantastic fighter and the phoenix king basically sends him out to go hey Deal with this problem, deal with that problem. The oceans need protecting from the Dark Elves. The oceans need protecting from, well, a lot of stuff. Let's be honest, the Warhammer Fantasy Oceans are pretty fucked. There's Krakens and giant sharks and everything. Uh, and I mean, like, proper Megalodon-style huge. I always liked this character. The fact that he was so popular enough to get his own Storm of Chaos army, too, is super cool. He was remembered for the end time stuff, and just in general, like, there's always been a lot of love from the fan base for the Sea Lord, and it's so easy to think on how he could work, because he could be a pseudo-lord, very similar to that of the Vampire Coast, so he's building up his own ship. Well, not even ship, it would be maybe a sky cutter or something. Uh, it depends, actually. And, yeah, I could see a moving type of campaign where you're going to be dealing with Loki of Falheart, you're going to be dealing with, uh, I don't know, whatever problems appear in the oceans, really, and start off maybe in that random minor faction area, those islands where this high elf minor faction is just chilling there. Let's be honest there, there has to be a reason why those islands were added in. It's something that my guess is in lore, but come on, right? Like, there is nothing going on there, right? <laughs> It's a minor faction that even during time lapses, they don't die unless they get confederated and then an army realizes they're there. They don't move. It just would make so much sense to have a character start off there, do his damage, travel the oceans, fight loads of different quests on the oceans themselves. And yeah, I mean, 
in this case, my idea for the Dark Elves, High Elves, and Sunesh DLC would be that they're trying to get away from Sunesh. The Dark Elves have done something, the Sunesh faction has started turning their eyes onto the High Elves, and this is why you're kind of being an isolationist, trying to buy your time before these Suneshi demons start coming for you, right? I don't know, I want this character... I, I might see a lot of people asking for other ones, because yes, there's a number of characters missing. This is, like I've said before many, many times, there are many characters that were introduced in Warhammer Fantasy and just never had anything, like, done with them properly. I know some people would be saying, what about the Phoenix King? You know, Finaba the Seafarer. I don't know, man. Uh, it just it makes more sense to go with a more minor character because the Phoenix King dies soon in lore anyway, and it's very obvious we're heading towards a end times style DLC. Like, so Sea Lord just kind of makes sense. The big thing here is a legendary hero. So there's two characters, Cole Hill, which I really doubt. Because we do have Alistair, who is uh, made for a Make-A-Wish thing. I mean, it's possible. We could have two. It's just... I don't know. And then Caradrin, which is the Captain of the Phoenix God. Personally, prefer him mostly because it does feel like we are going to go towards a End Times themed DLC. And this guy is fairly relevant to the End Times. Oh, I mean, the thing is he blows up. Um, <laughs> that's the, the main thing that he does during the End Times. Thank you, Teclas. But any of them would be kind of cool, to be honest. Um, hey, if they're going to do less units, why not both, right? Thing is, I don't imagine Corhill coming in as like a legendary lord, which I guess could also still work. They could decide, yeah, let's make a character for Shrace, but then Nakari would be kind of screwed, and then have to move him or move Corhill somewhere else, actually. It works. It doesn't have to be there. You can just teleport back, same as the other high elf factions can do. I know some people would be saying, yeah, but what about a FLC Legendary Lord? But I imagine that that would be like the Sunesh character, if the hypothetical DLC is true. But yeah, I don't know. I, I'd, I'd like to go for Karadrian because I don't feel like we'd get uh, Anointed of Asurian, so this could kind of be like the, well, you didn't get the Anointed, but you have these lads. These are just some ideas for the High Elves. Uh, I must admit that this was a difficult video to do because it was going after a faction which is so close to completion but would still need a little bit more. The main thing is the update. If they just decide to do a faction rework and stuff, I mean, that's fine. But I would love to see, like, the Skycutter, and I think everyone else would too. But yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Let's start a bit of a discussion. The other state of the factions are going to be much easier to make compared to this one. It's mostly just, again, the High Elves are in a weird spot. Same thing with the Dark Elves, but I feel like they could do something really, really cool with the Dark Elves. So, yeah, watch out for that coming soon. Have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you all again very, very soon.